Today we are talking about the Ming Dynasty, and I'm going to tell you about a ship that was five times bigger than the Santa Maria. So let's get started. How's it going everybody? Welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade and we are taking a tour around Minecraft while we discuss the happening, what happened during the Ming Dynasty of China. Be sure to stick around until the end of the video to see the ship that I mentioned earlier. So what do you say? Let's begin. We're going to start here at the Great Wall. I think this is a perfect place because it was not started during the Ming Dynasty but it was enhanced and added to during this time, just like China itself. In fact, roughly 5,500 miles of the more than 13,000 total miles were built during this time. But perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe we should go back to when Kublai Khan died and when the Huan Dynasty started to crumble due to weak emperors. Keep that in mind for later. This opened the door for Zhu Huangjiang to claim the throne and become emperor. Zhu reunited the country and established the capital of Nanjing, which is in the southern half of China. This is the start of the brilliant dynasty otherwise known as Ming, the dynasty that would rule China for the next 300 years. Zhu viewed himself as a military leader who brought peace and order to China. Because of this, he gave himself the name Hong Wu. Now, although he accomplished a lot, he did use very harsh means to reach those ends. He was very worried about disloyalty to his government and, yeah, often punished those he suspected of treason. But for as good as things were going, excuse me, for as good as things were going under Hong Wu, it was not until his son Young Li took over after his death that the Ming Dynasty really flourished. You know, Young Li, he was motivated to be a powerful ruler like his father. Young Li moved the capital north to Beijing and built the imperial city. This was a place of government governmental buildings and palaces. But the center area is probably one you are familiar with, the Forbidden City. I mean, seriously, look around. This place is beautiful. The gardens and thousands of rooms make up this complex, and it still stands more than 500 years later. I tell you what, if you ever get the chance and you get to visit China, definitely visit the Forbidden City. Now, back to the Ming Dynasty time frame. This was a time of changes for China. Some were new and others were ideas that were brought back. An example of this was the civil service examination. These extremely difficult tests were designed to make sure people could handle their jobs, as well as taking the job seriously. One job was taking the census, census being a count of the population. Simply put, this means counting the people living in China. This sounds like a good idea, but come on, we're talking about the government. What do you think their motive was? Well, they wanted to figure out who owed taxes to fund the government. Makes sense, right? So the strong government set up by the early emperors of the Ming Dynasty allowed for peace and security. With these, the economy improved and this growth led to improvements to the infrastructure of China. Improvements to roads and the Grand Canal allowed merchants to ship their goods much further and much faster. You know, their goods such as rice, and they would be able to ship to different regions of China. In turn, new types of goods came into China like new types of rice that were brought up from Southeast Asia. Lastly, this was a time when farmers were encouraged to grow cotton because of, and because of this, cotton became the main cloth worn by most Chinese. Now, take a look at this. This, look around, this is a rendition of Zheng He's ship that he used to explore for China. This is just one from his fleet of hundreds of ships, but it's the largest. I mean, look how big it is compared to the Santa Maria sailed by Columbus. You know, I mentioned this earlier, here we go. But let's talk about the voyages. These voyages were designed to spread Chinese influence to other countries. Between 1405 and 1433, there were seven voyages. They increased trade with other kingdoms, as well as demanding tribute be paid by weaker kingdoms. 
all the while spreading Chinese culture. Now, some of the ideas, or excuse me, not ideas, some of the items that were traded were silk, paper, and porcelain, but he returned with items that were unknown to China, such as exotic animals like giraffes. Even though Zheng He was bringing in these benefits to China, there were some who complained that these voyages cost too much and invited foreign ideas into the country. So, when He passed away in 1433, the fleet was disassembled, you know, scrapped for parts, and no new ships were built. Within 50 years, Chinese shipbuilding technology was outdated and all but forgotten. As has been the theme with Chinese dynasties, they did well until corrupt officials gained power. The same fate befell the Ming. Higher taxes led to local revolts, and by 1644, the Manchus had captured Beijing and set up their own dynasty. So, what do you think about the Ming dynasty? It's a pretty full and rich history, huh? Have you heard of these Chinese ships that we're looking at? You know, the size that we talked about. Did you know they were this big? Tell okay, you what, let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like button for me. You know I love the engagement, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You know, if that button's red, let's turn it gray. You know, and be sure to check out my other videos, like the ones you see to the side over here. I have other history videos, both U.S. history, world history, like this one. I also have civics videos, you know, governmental videos. I even have videos that are shot in 360 that you can look all the way around. So be sure to check them out, because I know you're going to like them. So for Virtual History 360, I'm Mr. Wade. I'll see you next time.